Hey guys, so just a quick recap of prime numbers. Prime numbers are numbers that are only divisible by themselves and by the number 1. Um, 1 doesn't count as a prime number. The smallest prime number you can start with is 2. Um, you can see here some other prime numbers like 3, 5, 7, 11, and so on. So moving on, just a quick recap of dealing with positive and negative numbers. So in general, when you have two positives, it's pretty straightforward. It's the arithmetic you learned when you were younger. So 2 plus 2 equals 4, 1 plus 1 is 2, um, things like that. So when you add two negative numbers, you generally get a negative answer. So here we have negative 3 plus negative 4 gets you negative 7. Whenever you see something like this, this notation of a sign and parentheses, what you can generally do is just think, okay, well, if I have a positive next to a negative, that's going to give me a negative. Moving on, down here you can see a similar situation. You have a negative and a positive symbol. So what you can do here when you subtract a positive is just turn that sign into a negative. So that's why we get negative 7 here. So when you see a negative and a positive, that also gets you a negative. So these two situations are similar. Now here we're subtracting in a negative, and that will generally turn that symbol into a positive. So that's why this becomes 1, because this becomes plus 4. So when you see a negative and another negative, that'll get you a positive. So these are the three things to keep an eye out for when dealing with negatives and positives. Um, the one thing I didn't touch on up here was just a positive and a negative number. You generally just take whatever's higher, right? So here 4 is the positive number and that's higher than negative 3, which is why it gets you 1. You can also just rephrase this as 4 minus 3. That's pretty straightforward. So it's just these three things you need to keep an eye on. So moving on, when we're multiplying and dividing numbers that happen to be negative and positive, these are some of the rules that you need to follow. Obviously, when you have two positive numbers and you're multiplying and or dividing them, you'll always get a positive answer. So stuff like 2 times 2 is 4, or 4 divided by 2 is 2. It's pretty straightforward. When you have two negatives, that's going to turn the answer positive. So if we have negative 2 times negative 2, that's also going to get you 4. Or negative 4 divided by negative 2, that's also going to get you positive 2. Now when we have a positive and a negative, that's when the um, sign in front of the number will change. We'll have, let's say, negative 2 times positive 2. That'll get you negative 4. The same would be true if you had 2 times negative 2 also gets you negative 4. And the same goes if you're dividing. Negative 4 divided by 2 will always get you a negative 2. So remember, two positives get you a positive, two negatives get you a positive as well, and one positive and one negative will get you a negative. So moving on to mean, median, and mode. Just defining these terms here, mean is just this another way of saying average. So if you were to have 2, 3, and 4 in a group of numbers and you wanted the average, I mean obviously it's 3, but what you would do is you would just add them up and divide it by the number of numbers in the group. So if you're adding 2 to 3 is 5, plus 4 is 9, and we have 3 numbers. So that gets us an, gets us an average of 3. Now moving on to weighted averages, you need to take into account the value of each item in the group. So here's a sample problem. We have six people with an average height of 62 inches, and the other four people in the group have an average height of 70 in inch inches. What's the average height of the entire group? So what you would need to do is take the six people here and multiply it by the average height of that small group. So you'd have 6 times 62, which is equal to 372. Now you need to take the other four people here and multiply it by their average, which is 70. And that gets 280. The next step here would be to add those two subtotals up. 
which gets you 652, and then divide by the total number of people in the group of 10. And that gets you 65.2, which is the weighted average, or the average of the entire group. So moving on, the median would be the middle number in a group of numbers. So again, if we go back to 2, 3, and 4, 3 not only would be the average or the mean of the group, it would also be the median. If you were, however, to have an even number of numbers in the group, so let's say 2, 3, 4, 5, there's no exact middle. So the way to find the median is to take the mean or the average of the two middle numbers of 3 and 4 which is 3.5, right? Moving on, the mode is just the number that shows up the most in a group of numbers. So if we had 1, 1, 3, 5, 7, the mode would be 1 because it shows up twice, which is more than all the other numbers in the group. So that's pretty much the end of the quick number tips recap um, of stuff you might find on the SAT and the ACT. Uh, here's some questions that you guys may be interested in doing just to recap some of the topics we just went over. I'll probably go over the answers in a follow-up video or in the next lesson. Um, feel free to reach out uh, with any questions you have on Twitter or in the comments below. And um, yeah, hope this helps.